Hello and welcome to South Asia Focus. I am Smita Prakash. This week we have with us Professor of Chinese Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi, Shrikant Kondapalli, who will speak to us about the recent visit of the Chinese Foreign Minister to India and the future of India-China relations after Prime Minister Narendra Modi assumed office in India. But before that, here is a brief introduction. On June 9th, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who was visiting India as a special envoy of the Chinese President to strengthen bilateral relations with the new government in New Delhi. A day before, Wang had met his counterpart, India's Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj as well. Indian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Sayyid Akbaruddin later said that the two countries felt that there was incredible available potential for growth of economic ties and that everything was discussed including counter-terrorism. Prime Minister Modi during his election campaign had vowed to take a tougher stand on guarding India's borders with China than his predecessor Dr. Manmohan Singh as the two nations endeavour to end the border tensions which have been prevalent for the last five decades or so. Prime Minister Modi recently also said that with scale, skill decade, and speed, India can rise to the challenge of competing with China. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. Kondapalli. Um, China's economy is already four times the size of India. Is Mr. Narendra Modi being extremely ambitious when he says uh, that India can compete with China? Uh, I think indeed uh, there is uh, the uh, ambition in 60 months time Mr. Modi wants to realize a lot of projects which could have placed uh, India almost at par with China in terms of the 10.7 trillion dollar economy. Uh, it's not really difficult in the next 60 months to India to you know kind of cobble up uh, things and then uh, rearrange uh, the priorities, uh, build up the infrastructure and the manufacturing sector and then grow at a stage of roughly 9 to 10 percent uh, economic growth rate, it's not really uh, impossible. Uh, right now China has literally a stranglehold as far as the manufacturing sector is concerned. India is lagging far behind. So is it pragmatic to expect that we can, uh, I mean that India can at any stage be competing with China in the near future in manufacturing? Well as a percentage of GDP, 56% uh, of uh, the GDP in China is of manufacturing. Mm. In comparison, about 15% is the manufacturing component in India uh, um, of the total GDP with 50 odd percentage for the services. India is more towards the service sector rather than towards the manufacturing sector. So from uh, going from 14% to about 56% of the manufacturing sector, it's actually a Herculean task, but not so an impossible can, one. Can India uh, uh, cooperate with uh, China to make India into a manufacturing hub? Why would China want to uh, cooperate with India to make India a manufacturing hub if, if it's going to be competition? How does cooperation and competition work together? Well, uh, the desire of the Indian government is to actually bring in the Chinese investments in the five industrial parks agreed to during Premier Li Keqiang's visit last May to New Delhi. And they have identified five states within India to have the industrial zones. But so far we have not seen any substantial progress in terms of the manufacturing uh, uh, you know, set up in India with the Chinese assistance. If the Chinese intend to shift some of their manufacturing base, indeed they need to because their labor costs are rising. Uh, secondly, there is the environmental fallout. Thirdly, there is also the domestic consumption which has not really picked up in China. Uh, fourthly, there is also the aging of the society in China. So all this meant that there is actually uh, in natural course of time, like the Japanese shifted to China in the 1990s, like the Koreans shifted their manufacturing base to China, or the Taiwanese shifted their manufacturing base to China. It makes actually qu quite a natural trend that China sh need to move its manufacturing base to other countries, including Bangladesh, including India. When we talk about these uh, industrial zones, industrial parks that China wants to set up, and which the Indian government has said that it is uh, willing to and it is keen to set up these China, uh, these manufacture the uh, industrial zones industrial parks but what 
about the security fears that if if these parks are near security establishment knowing that india has had security related issues with china in the past how safe will these zones be for india as far as the security aspect is concerned absolutely no concerns on the security front okay. because these are in uttar pradesh karnataka tamil nadu gujarat and uh, uh, andhra pradesh now Where we have nuclear divided. reactors and all which are it, it's true but these nuclear reactors indeed actually the chinese are selling a lot of nuclear reactors to india Uh, nearly 20-25% of the component of Chinese exports to India is actually linked to the reactors. Hmm. Uh, uh, so it's not. You're talking about hardware. Thing. That that's right. right. Correct. Uh, machinery. Correct. But w- when we're talking in terms of, say, Tamil Nadu, you have the Kudan Kulam out there, right? And if you have an industrial park out there which is nearby, is it absolutely is it? no concerns? Okay. Because these are only civilian nuclear power plants in which China and India wanted to cooperate in between in November 2006 when Hu Jintao uh, uh, mm-hmm. went to uh, India it was at that time that it was agreed that both will cooperate in the civilian nuclear technologies as well uh, absolutely there are no security concerns uh, in terms of the industrial zones because these industrial zones actually are going to produce washing machines air conditioners uh probably automobiles uh probably you know other manufactured goods so absolutely no concern there on the security see uh, the reason why i ask that is that uh, china was in pakistan is in pakistan building roads at the same time one knows that there is a security component involved so if china has to be involved in rail making in railways in ports in india is there a security component involved in that too uh in the case of china pakistan let me say that chinese have invested in the copper mines in baluchistan uh china had invested in for instance a chinese company called king ho uh, had invested 17 billion dollars mm. uh in baluchistan and other places but the security problem that you are actually mentioning is some of the chinese were killed by the militants in in uh, baluchistan and and karachi even Uh, so the security problem actually is for the security of the of the chinese personnel who are working in these companies it's not about the security concerns in terms of chinese um, uh, their uh, establishment vis-a-vis the security of pakistan or security of india as a, as a whole it's a human security related uh, okay. i think we need to differentiate uh, the so i don't think the industrial zones are a, uh, any major security concern for india or for that matter any other country because these industrial zones were also established by japan and china before in the 1990s absolutely these are basically civilian producing uh, goods which are of uh, use for any other now population. when we talk about uh, you see uh, when uh, mr narendra modi and other bjp leaders were campaigning a few months ago they had kind of a very um, strong they had very strong views about the border issue with china the boundary issue and uh, it did seem as if uh, the bjp if if they come to power they are not going to be uh, very amenable to a relationship with china not as easy as uh, the upa government was with china on the boundary issue is that why the chinese establishment sent the foreign minister immediately uh, to mend bridges or to start a relationship a reboot the relationship with india immediately uh there are two things for this uh number one uh, during election campaign during the election heat uh, there is a lot of uh, statements uh, given by the uh, contending candid- candidates uh this happened in the us elections mm. uh when uh, clinton uh, uh, bush uh, obama and various others have actually criticized china but then when they became presidents they they actually followed a certain g2 uh, between washington dc and beijing So in most of the elections we can see that there is the uh, need for uh, you know keeping the flock together mm. uh, or expanding the electoral constituency so that's the main concern uh, consideration when Mr Modi spoke about the Chinese expansionism mm. uh, expansionist mindset in Pasi Ghat in February this year in Arunachal Pradesh but it's perfectly um, uh, understandable because he's he's trying to address the nationalist constituency in india um it is a different thing when he becomes prime minister he has to actually also deliver goods to the indian people 
which means that uh, economic growth rates, uh, addressing unemployment issues, uh, so on and so forth has to be tackled. Uh, today, China has $3.8 trillion of foreign exchange reserves. Uh, and it is involved in several infrastructure projects of gigantic scale across the globe. Uh, so this is an asset which Mr. Modi, when he was the chief minister of Gujarat uh, state in India, he had visited China four times and he had attracted investment from China. So I think there is uh, the uh, second um, uh, perspective, which is that as the prime minister, he needs the investment from, uh, from China. Uh, the other aspect of this uh, discussion is that the uh, Wang Yi's visit to New Delhi should be seen in the context of South China Sea dispute and the U.S. rebalancing in the Asia Pacific. Uh, with so, which Chinese, means is China shopping for uh, allies or for friends at least in, in the neighborhood? Indeed, that's the main uh, uh, purpose of the visit of the Chinese foreign minister to India, mm. because. Uh, in about two months time, um, there will be a meeting in Napidov in Myanmar, right. in which the East Asian uh, summit meeting will take place. Uh, the 10 plus 8 countries, which are part of the East Asian summit, will be meeting, including India, China and other countries. Uh, in the previous East Asian summit meetings, the South China Sea dispute became a contentious issue. Mm. Uh, and China was isolated in the East Asian summit meetings because of the territorial uh, mm -hmm. acquisitions mm -hmm. by the Chinese side. What it means basically is China today wants India either in a neutral position in East Asian summit meeting or at least not to take a position which is uh, critical off, of least, China. if nothing else. Absolutely. All right. Um, when we talked about Mr. Modi's uh, priority being the economy and putting uh, the economy back on track, getting a growth rate, jobs, um, poverty elevation, these are all important issues, but there's also uh, the boundary issue and um, securing the boundary <clears throat> is something that's going to be non-negotiable and it's something that is going to be priority for this government. Uh, so when it comes to that, there's the special representatives who talk, they've had several rounds of talks, but they never seem to be able to solve this problem for decades together. The entire world says, yes, it is a peaceful boundary, but it's not you're not able to solve it so when you do when you have a dispute on a boundary how do you go for, forward after that uh, actually both leaderships in china and india try to coexist mm -hmm. um, either in peaceful manner or in an armed manner uh, in 1962 in an armed manner but overall they have lived in peace and tranquil uh, situation across the borders uh, of course, they have not been able to use the uh, borders for economic activity, for tourism, for exchange of people. Mm. Uh, but they were able to uh, uh, postpone the dispute, the territorial dispute. Uh, being rational actors in the international system, the Chinese leadership and the Indian leadership uh, saw that this is a very complicated issue to be resolved. Uh, and they need to uh, focus on other issues which are mutually beneficial for both of them, including trade, including multilateral interaction, including on various uh, problems that both are facing, for instance, in WTO, in climate change proposals, and so on. Yeah, that the climate change proposal brings me that there's going to be the BRICS summit in, uh, in July. And in fact, Hillary Clinton in her book has mentioned how during the Copenhagen summit, um, uh, she and uh, President Obama got to know in 2009 that uh, there were the BRICS uh, leaders who were going to who were holding a meeting on the side, and uh, President Obama and Hillary Clinton actually went and uh, barged in to into that meeting. Tell me, uh, in what way is this BRICS unit going to be some kind of a bulwark towards uh, towards the American uh, uh, influence in this region? I, I read that account mm -hmm. where the Copenhagen. Uh, uh, you know, sideline meeting was uh, attended by uh, uh, in a in a impromptu manner by mm -hmm. President Obama, and he uh, suggests that the uh, Chinese leader, uh, uh, the was South holding African a president, secret <laughs> meeting with the Indian Prime Minister <laughs> and the and South African president South and African, the Brazilian president. Yeah. Um, interestingly, they suggested that the uh, Chinese side was actually leading the pack, mm -hmm. the basic countries: Brazil, uh, South mm -hmm. Africa, India, China, mm -hmm. in this. Uh, and trying to suggest that we will not roll back the mm. uh, the uh, uh, 
you know, pollution levels uh, to about 18 to 20 percent, which was suggested during Copenhagen meeting. Uh, what this basically indicates is that they do have concerns in terms of the industrialized West, mm. uh, that these are related to uh, industrialization, uh, these are related to economic growth rates. And so they have all come together in terms of this format of BRICS. Mm. Uh, so in the next meeting mm. in uh, Fortaleza in July, uh, we are expected to uh, see uh, discussions related to uh, Ukraine, uh, discussions related to North Korea, discussions related to Iran uh, and Syria because there is the uh, uh, situation evolving in uh, Syria as well. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you.